China's breakthrough thermal material withstands 2,600 degrees Celsius. Why China's material dares to exceed Starship's limits. And why 2,600 degrees Celsius has NASA silent. While Elon Musk's Starship's flaps were burning in a 2,500 degrees Celsius plasma inferno, Chinese scientists unveiled a 2,600 degrees Celsius ace, a temperature high enough to transform a fiery reentry from a hellish gamble into a casual stroll. It sounds unbelievable, but the lifeline of human spacecraft has been completely rewritten by a material thinner than a strand of hair. What is this? Nano armor. Simply put, it's like dressing a spacecraft in a magical cloak made of billions of microscopic mazes and photon traps. Does heat want to pass through by solid conduction? It has to. Run its legs off. In a nanotube maze. Does it want to pass through gas? The nanopores are so tiny that molecules can barely move. The most incredible part is how it handles thermal radiation. The carbon nanotube structure swallows it like a black hole with no escape. Even more revolutionary, this material not only withstands temperatures nearly a thousand degrees higher than Starship's limit, but is also 50 times more efficient at insulation than traditional materials. This means future spacecraft can achieve superior protection with a thinner, lighter, protective suit. Let's dive into the technological revolution, the global race, and the new chapter for human exploration behind this material. A material revolution. From passive defense to active insulation, the images from Starship's 10th test flight are still heart wrenching. A fiery ball enveloping the spacecraft during re entry, with its belly tiles enduring temperatures over 2,500 degrees Celsius, ultimately leading to a burn through flap and loss of contact. In contrast, the highly aligned carbon nanotube stack film developed by a team from Tsinghua University in China pushes the tolerance limit directly to 2,600 degrees Celsius. This is not just a simple numbers game. Traditional thermal insulation is like a clumsy shield. The silicon fiber tiles used on NASA's space shuttles, for example, required over 24,000 pieces per aircraft. They were not only heavy but also needed special adhesives making maintenance extremely costly. In 2003, the Space Shuttle Columbia disintegrated due to a damaged tile, allowing hot gas to intrude and killing all seven astronauts. The new Chinese material, however, adopts an active defense strategy with three thermal protection mechanisms that lock down heat transfer at its source, a truly dimensional reducing attack. What makes it even more remarkable is its light weight. At 2,600 degrees Celsius, its thermal conductivity is only 0.03 W slash MK, 50 times better than top-tier traditional insulating materials like graphite felt. This means future spacecraft can shed their heavy armor and carry more scientific equipment or fuel. Imagine how much space could be saved when half of a spacecraft's weight used to be dedicated to insulation. Analysts take this isn't just a breakthrough in material performance. It's an innovation in the very concept of thermal insulation. The history of aerospace thermal protection has seen a progression from the tile array system of NASA's space shuttles, which, though successful at resisting 2,000 degrees Celsius, led to the Columbia tragedy due to its fragility. SpaceX's Starship later adopted a hard protective silicon carbide coating, enabling reusability but at the cost of heavy, expensive structures. Western aerospace powers have long been trapped in a passive defense, technical rut, either sacrificing structural efficiency for extreme protection or failing to overcome weight limits with traditional designs. The Chinese research team took an entirely different path, building a flexible protective net on a nanoscale. By compounding aerogel with nanofibers, they created an ultralight insulating material with a density only three times that of air. This material combines the lightness of cotton with the toughness of rock. When subjected to high temperatures, the air in the nanopores forms a dynamic insulating layer, while the fiber network acts like countless microscopic springs to absorb stress. This, using softness to overcome hardness, design completely overturns the brute force 
mentality of traditional thermal materials, increasing spacecraft insulation efficiency by 40% and reducing unit area weight by 65%. Even more critically, this innovation directly addresses the Achilles heel of reusable spacecraft. In the past, thermal protection systems accounted for 15 to 20% of the launch weight, and high maintenance costs made reusability impractical. The new Chinese material ensures safety while enabling rapid repair through a modular design and an intelligent temperature control system, compressing single maintenance costs to one-tenth of the original. This groundbreaking solution, which demands both safety and efficiency, unquestionably opens a new path for human space exploration, marking China's historic leap from a follower to a leader in core aerospace technology. A global race, Western peers trapped by the heat barrier while China's material broke the 2,600 degrees Celsius barrier in the lab, its Western counterparts are still struggling with the heat barrier problem. The UK's Ministry of Defense is ambitiously pursuing a hypersonic missile project but has not even confirmed the launch platform, hoping to import technology from the US. Why? Because at over Mach 5, the surface temperature of a vehicle can soar above 1000 degrees Celsius, and existing materials simply can't handle it. The US Oak Ridge National Laboratory did develop a new silicon carbide thermal protection system claiming it can withstand multiple high-temperature returns, but it still lags behind the Chinese material. What's more embarrassing is SpaceX. Starship's 10th test flight was specifically designed to test its thermal protection, and while Musk declared it a success, the footage showed the spacecraft glowing red before ultimately disintegrating at 65 kilometers. This reveals a harsh reality. The West has lost its absolute advantage in the field of extreme high-temperature materials. European hypersonic projects like the Space Rider have faced repeated delays, with the core issue being inadequate thermal protection technology. Data shows that thermal material problems alone have extended the development cycle of European hypersonic projects by 40% and led to a 60% budget overrun. The Chinese material can not only withstand 2,600 degrees Celsius, but also maintain structural stability, a feat that leaves Western peers in the dust. Analysts take, thermal protection technology is the Achilles heel of space exploration, a long-standing choke point for many countries. The UK, due to insufficient domestic R&D, relies on the US and Japan for over 85% of its high-end thermal protection materials risking project shutdowns with any supply chain disruption. The European Space Agency's Space Rider program has faced cumulative delays of six years and budget overruns of 2.3 billion euros due to substandard core thermal materials. Even the US, a major aerospace power, spent 12 years and over $4 billion to develop a barely usable heat shield for its new Orion spacecraft. China's breakthrough is a landmark achievement. It not only shatters a 37-year-long Western technical blockade but, thanks to its unique nanocomposite aerogel technology, also reduces the material's density to one-fifth of traditional products while tripling its thermal insulation efficiency. In the current intense space race, this lightweight and high-performance thermal protection solution is like a golden shield for deep space probes and thermal armor for hypersonic vehicles. The nation that masters high-temperature materials will seize the strategic high ground in future interstellar exploration and near-space development. The future, from Martian returns to artificial suns the value of this nanomaterial goes far beyond safely bringing spacecraft home. It is opening up a series of future doors that were once blocked by the heat barrier. For deep space exploration, a spacecraft re-entering Earth's atmosphere from Mars will travel much faster than one returning from low Earth orbit, generating far more intense heat. With 2,600 degrees Celsius protection, future Martian astronauts won't have to worry about the risk of being roasted. In the field of nuclear fusion, China's breakthrough is timely. The International Thermonuclear Experimental Reactor, ITER, project is scheduled for full power discharge in 2035, and its core component, the diverter, must withstand the impact of plasma at hundreds of millions of degrees. China's new tungsten copper diverters have already solved some problems, 
and the addition of this carbon nanotube material could take the insulation efficiency of nuclear fusion devices to the next level, accelerating the commercialization of an artificial sun. The U.S. has also recognized the importance of high-temperature materials, with the Oak Ridge National Laboratory's silicon carbide system designed for reusable spacecraft. However, the dual advantage of the Chinese material, in both temperature limit and insulation efficiency, makes it more competitive in future fields like energy and hypersonic transport. Imagine a future where a hypersonic flight from Beijing to New York takes just two hours, with this nanomaterial playing a crucial role.